Mueller, uh, Robert Mueller was dragged, and I do think literally dragged from the looks of it, up to Capitol Hill for uh, hearings today. It really seemed like he didn't want to be there, um, and I can see why. Democrats, of course, were expecting uh, fireworks. I mean, they're always expecting fireworks, especially where, where Mueller is concerned. And he has let them down so many times in the firework department, but yet they keep expecting it. They, they just keep coming back. Uh, all of his fireworks end up just being the little sparklers that burn for a second and then, and then end up burning your hand and you throw them out. Uh, and that's what it was again today, shockingly. In fact, as the hearing was beginning and Mueller gave his opening statement, he made it very clear that he isn't going to say anything that wasn't already in the report. Everything that he says, it's going to be back. It's going to be in the report. If, if you ask him a question that has to do with something outside of the report, he's not going to answer it. Everything's going to go back to the report, which raises the question, What's the point of the hearing? It's already in there. He wrote 400 pages. Well, somebody wrote 400 pages. We don't know if it's him. We'll go back to that in a second. Um, but it's this 400 pages. That's that's all he's got to say. And it's right there. You can read it for yourself. Um, yet we had the hearing. And why is that? Well, because, of course, the real point is for grandstanding. But but here's the great great thing. And this is what I appreciate. This This is the one thing I enjoyed as I was suffering through watching these hearings. One thing I enjoyed is that these politicians were there hoping to grandstand, but their grandstanding was undermined at every turn by the fact that Mueller apparently didn't bring his hearing aid or he forgot to turn it on. So we didn't hear anything that they said. So they, they, they were, they were trying to just go over everything that was already in there. In fact, um, uh, uh, Nadler, Jerry Nadler was the first person to ask questions. And his whole line of questioning was just going over what was already in the report. But Mueller couldn't hear what he was saying. So it was it was like uh, Jerry Nadler was like, uh, Mr. Mueller, uh, the, the report states X, does it not? I'm sorry, what was that? Um, well, it's in my reading of the report, it states X. Um, can you repeat that one last time? X is in the report. Does it not say X? And so there was just like that, back and forth, back and forth, uh, which was pretty funny. But at the same time, it was kind of concerning because Robert Mueller really came across like, frankly, a befuddled and confused old man, which I'm not going to make fun of him for that. He's 74, 75 years old, something like that. And he looked every bit his age and was acting it too. Um, and that is no surprise. I mean, you're 74, 75, you've been given this high pressure job. It seemed like it war really wore him down. I imagine that's part of the reason why he didn't want to do this hearing because he knew he wouldn't perform well, um, and he didn't perform well. But it, it, it is, as I said, concerning, because it makes you think, well, um, who? this was the guy that was doing this whole investigation for two years? Um, is, this, is this person even capable of doing an investigation like this? Was he the one actually running the investigation? Is this his report and you know, not somebody else? What we end up with it then in the end um, is a report that was already written and published a long time ago. Um, we have a hearing about a report with the guy who ostensibly wrote it, but has already said he won't provide extra details about it. And we have a guy who wrote the report ostensibly who can't hear and doesn't understand what's going on apparently and uh, doesn't even know what's in his own report. And that all adds up to, uh, it did add up to, Maybe a few humorous moments, but other than that, as far as I can tell, nothing of consequence. You know, the, the talking heads and the pundits are going to parse it and come up with things that are significant and it's on both sides of it. But really, when it comes down to it, this Mueller thing, um, it, it's, all, it's all baked in as far as the voters are concerned. If you hate Trump, then you believe that he's a Russian spy and a traitor and nothing Mueller says is, is going to change your mind. It doesn't matter. And if you support Trump, again, it doesn't matter what Mueller says, you support him. And I think if you're in the middle, um, you probably are bored with this by now and are sick of it. And you're going to make your decision about who you vote for based on something other than Robert Mueller. That's, that's my feeling anyway. So none of this matters. That's my analysis. And I will move on.